Good morning, and thanks, Keith. I'm Carl Nettleton, the founder of Open Oceans Global, and I've been looking forward to sharing with you how we're using Survey123 and RGS Online to address the global ocean plastic crisis. How much, how much ocean plastic is there? You know, the answers are still emerging. And in 2019, I made a presentation to Esri and, and I said 8 million tons goes into the ocean each year and 90% of it from 10 rivers in Asia and Africa. And new information in 2020 up that estimate to 11 million tons that will grow to an estimated 29 million tons by 2040. Yet in 2021, new research told us that 84% of riverborne plastic comes from nine countries in Asia and Brazil. Five countries contribute almost 70%. 36% comes from the Philippines alone. And 75% of ocean plastic is actually on shorelines, not out in ocean waters as most believe. So almost tripling the amount of plastic by 2040 is an untenable trajectory, as the Pew Charitable Trust and System IQ said in their groundbreaking 2020 report. And, and current commitments will only reduce the flows by 7%. Massive investment, is needed by both government and business. Ironically, Pew says that investing in the right solutions to address the problem would cost less than continuing to do business as usual. Even if all Pew's recommendations are fully funded and implemented, 5 million metric tons will go into the ocean each year, still an unacceptable amount. On the screen, you can see an outline of Pew's recommended solutions. They're important and needed, but they're complex, require lots of funding, and will likely take a long time and they require all countries and businesses to achieve them. In the interim, there's a missing solution, stopping plastic in rivers before it reaches the sea. At Open Oceans Global, we're addressing the problem in a new way. We know almost all ocean plastic comes from land, and most of that's from rivers. We know most of the plastic is on shorelines and that the majority is highly visible macroplastic. If we knew the source of that plastic and collected the best solutions, and if we knew the experts and leaders working the issue, then for the first time, those experts and leaders would have a way to stay connected and collaborate on implementing the best solution. And that's what our platform does. And we're using Esri technology to make our platform possible. Survey123 captures the location of shorelines fouled by plastic. ArcGIS Online populates the Survey123 data on the map and allows us to show other layers like ocean currents and rivers of the world, including some layers from the Living Atlas. It also allowed us to develop a plastic tracing app using NOAA ocean current data. Esri technology is critical for ease of data entry and visualization of this global problem on our maps. You know, instead of saying, oh my gosh, we're viewing a Google, a Google search like this one, with ArcGIS Online, we can give images like these global contexts. And that's the first filler, pillar of our platform sharing where plastic is collecting on shorelines, indicated by the red target icons on the map, making it visible globally for the first time. Clicking on the icon provides an image and the name of the shoreline. Clicking on the box in online icon brings up more information from Survey 123, including the source of plastic, what's being done to address the problem, and additional information. A link to the Survey 123 app is available on the website. With this form seen on the right side of the slide, we can provide the shoreline name, click on a spot on the map to geolocate it and provide other information. The data automatically populates the map when done. Our second pillar is sharing best practices. We're collecting and curating the best solutions we can find to the ocean plastic problem around the world. We're organizing them according to the categories on this sample screenshot from our portal. More categories can be added if needed. Here we feature a way to use a boom to collect plastic in a small river, a major policy initiative, and a biodegradable option to replace traditional plastic bottles. What you've seen so far on the public part is the public part of our portal. There's a private login portion of the portal too. Our third pillar, the experts and leaders member platform. This includes a directory of experts and leaders searchable by country, expertise, and type of organization allowing experts to find each other. It includes what we call Talkspace, a 24-7 virtual conference facility with a lobby, small meeting rooms, and presentation rooms that can hold up to 3,000 people. This is the space offered to global experts and leaders for collaboration. This is their space, not ours. The experts and leaders site also includes an ocean plastic tracing tool developed by Jingyi Wang for her master's project at the University of Redlands, 
We hope it is the first example of a project where global experts can work together on our portal to improve some solution critical to solving the ocean plastic crisis. Choosing a date, time, and number of days to trace, users need only click on a shoreline and tell the app to run. It will backtrace ocean currents to a potential location of where the plastic originated. Ching Yi will be presenting the tracing tool in more detail at 11.45 this morning. As an example of the value of our tracing tool, we know that what would otherwise be pristine Galapagos beaches are fouled by plastic. Galapagos researchers are among the best in the world in researching plastic found on the beaches and determining its source. They say that 60 to 70% comes from Ecuador and Peru, 30% from fishing fleets, and 10% from local sources. Our tracing pool consistently traces the source to the coastlines of Ecuador and Peru. Another example of our use of RTS online is the Philippines, the source of 36% of riverborne plastic to the ocean. Wouldn't it be wise for the World Bank, the United Nations, NGOs, and the multinational corporations doing business in the Philippines to put a global focus on the sources of that plastic and the solutions, implementing in one country perhaps all of Q's recommendations? Instead of being a pariah, the Philippines could become a model for implementing multiple solutions while reducing the global flow of plastic to the ocean by 36%. Our ESRI applications will help us to tell that story. There are three ways ESRI and its international community of users can help us to solve the ocean plastic crisis. The first is to engage ESRI experts in working with Jing Yi Wang and other global experts to refine the tracing tool to include wave and wind energy inputs to better define how plastic travels across the ocean. The second is to host the tracing tool. It is on the University of Redland server now, but can't stay there as a student project. So we need another robust server to more fully develop the plastic tracing tool. Finally, the international user community could help us to map the shorelines fouled by plastic. The Esri community is uniquely positioned to help. I don't think there's any other community so widely distributed around the globe and possessing the understanding and expertise of Esri technology to help populate our global map of foul beaches. In addition to deepening the data set of map shorelines, Esri and its international community would know they've contributed significantly to helping show the world the scope of the ocean plastic crisis and to play a role in connecting experts and leaders working on ocean plastic around the world. Thank you, Esri, for allowing us to be a nonprofit partner and for the chance to speak with you today and to Lorraine, Keith, Don, Guy, and the rest of the Esri team for all of their support. We hope that Esri's international community of users will join us in helping to solve the ocean plastic crisis. Thank you again. My contact information is available below.